So don't you guys want to know how to break stuff in your game? Because that's what we are going to see today, how to fracture objects for Unity. Oh, and in case you are wondering, this explosion you are seeing is from a course that I recently created and I left a discount for you in the description below, in case you are interested. So, there is a few ways to do this when it comes to fracturing pre-made objects. Personally, I love to use Blender because it's free and it's easy to pick up. So, with that being said, let's jump right into this and in case you are interested, this project is available on my Patreon page with the explosion included as well. So, this is the object I'm going to fracture. I picked it up from the asset store from here. And currently, the easiest way to fracture an object is by using Blender. It's free, it's easy to pick up, and there's a lot of documentation. I have the version 3.1.2, and the first thing we need is an empty scene, so I'm going to select everything with A and press delete. And to import our object, we can go to File, and in Import, we want to make sure that we select the same file type of the object we are trying to fracture. In my case, it's in FBX, so that's what I'm going to select and I'm going to navigate to the folder where I have the model and then press import and here we go, we have the box and before we proceed we need to go to edit and in preference, in add-ons, we want to search for cell fracture and turn it on ok, so every time we are trying to fracture a pre-made object we probably cannot fracture the object all at once so we need to break it down into smaller parts so the fracture process goes well. For example, in this case, I clearly have three parts. The box and the two iron hinges. So I'm going to select the object and press tab to enter in edit mode. If we get closer to one of these vertex, for example, and press L, it will select the isolated object, in this case the iron hinge. And we can separate it by pressing P. We can do the same to the other one, press L and then P, separate it and that's it, we have the box and then the two iron hinges. So let's fracture the box. I'm gonna press spacebar and search for cell fracture or you can go up here to object and in quick effects. Here we go, you have the cell fracture here. So cell fracture and it's fairly simple this. The first part is the point source. If it is from the own vertice, from particles or from the annotation pencil, which by the way, it's awesome. It's this pencil right here. If you set it to surface, you can tell it how you want this to break. For example, there was an impact at this point and then we have these waves. And as you can see, it paints only on the surface. And now, if we do the cell fracture and select annotation pencil and increase the noise to one and set recursion at one, it will fracture the object according to those lines. That's Pretty cool. And if you want to clear these annotation lines, you can press N and in view, down here, annotations, press the minus icon and there you go, or you can simply use the annotate eraser. Anyway, I want this to be broken by splinters, it's wood. So in the cell fracture, I'm going to say own vertice, the limit around 30 fragments and the noise at 1. And we can stretch the noise or shrink it. I'm going to shrink it in the X value. 0.1 and then we have the recursive shatter. Do we want to break the fragments even more? I'm gonna say 1, a limit of 6 and randomness of 20% and that's it. Now you can press OK and here we go. But if we move one of these fragments, as you can see, it's not hollow and this is a box. If you don't want your object to be hollow, then you are good to go. But in case you want it, here's what you can do. I'm gonna do a few Ctrl Z's and before proceeding to the cell fracture, we want to add a modifier, the solidify modifier, which will create thickness to these faces. As you can see, if I press Z, you can see true. And if I increase the thickness, this is what happens. I'm gonna set it to two. It's a good value for this object. I'm gonna leave it as it is. And on this arrow, I'm gonna press apply. Now we can do the cell fracture. I'm not gonna change anything. Those values are good. I'm gonna press OK and if I select one of these objects, as you can see now, it has thickness instead of being a chunk of fragment. By the way, if you see this flickering, that's normal. Blender keeps the original object. You can double click somewhere 
to select the original object and if you are satisfied with your fragmentation you can delete it. So that's one method, you can add thickness to your object if you don't want to add thickness, for example, I'm gonna fracture this iron inch, I'm gonna decrease the source limit to 10, recursive shatter at 0, and as you can see, if this happens to you, where basically we have these big volumes, what you can do is enter in edit mode, I'm gonna press on slash in the numpad to isolate this object, and then I'm going to select with control tab face, and basically with B, I'm going to select these faces right here. I'm literally dividing this object in half and then press P to separate it. I'm basically making the fragmentation process a little bit easier for Blender and decrease the source limit to 5 for example. And here we go. I'm gonna do the same for the other half. And that's it, now it fractures properly. I'm going to select the original mesh and delete it. And I'm going to repeat this process for this side. I could as well add thickness with the solidify modifier, but it needs to have a good thickness otherwise it will mess up the normals, but I'm still going to divide this in half. I'm actually going to try, yeah, that doesn't work to fracture out once, so yeah, I'm going to divide this in half, press P to separate it, use the cell fracture with 5 for the source limit, I'm gonna repeat it because the first time didn't go well, and I'm going to do the same for this other half. And that's it. Delete the original objects. And here we go, the box is completely shattered. And now all we gotta do is select all of these objects, go to export and select the same file type, in my case it's FBX. I'm gonna navigate to the folder where I have the original model, Fracture 2, and make sure to press Selected Objects, by the way. And that's it. If we go back to Unity, Normally, all we gotta do is drag and drop the fractured object and it will have the same position as the original one, in this case. I'm gonna push it a little bit to the sides and, well, in this case of the box, we only have one material, so I'm going to assign it to all of the fragments. And here we go. Looks really nice. If we move one of these up, as you can see, the box is hollow and it's ready to be exploded. But each fragment now needs to have physics. So let's select all of them. In add component, let's add a rigid body with a mass of 0 0.5. And then add a mesh collider. And turn on convex. Let me turn on gizmos, as you can see, everything has a collider and a rigid body. Obviously this is a little bit performance intense, especially for mobiles, but that's how it is. Now, we need to create a prefab out of this fractured object. Simply drag and drop to a folder. And actually, if you play this, the box will fall down, it will break down. Now, we need a script to add force to this and replace the original object, right? And it's a fairly easy script. I have one actually attached to the scene. If I open this up, I have three game objects, one for the original one, the fractured object and for the explosion prefab. Which by the way is from this course right here, in case you are interested, there's a link below. It's an awesome one. And then we need four floats. One for the explosion minimum force, for the maximum force of the explosion and for the radius of the explosion. The last one is to shrink each fragment. Instead of simply disappearing, I'm shrinking them towards the end. And in the update, every time I press spacebar, I fire the explosion function, which will check if there is an original object. If there is, then let's disable it, set active to false. We check if there is a fractured object assigned in the inspector. If there is, we are going to create an instantiation, which is a private object, by the way, this fract object. And this is the most important part. For each child the fractured object has, we are going to get the rigid body. If there is a rigid body, we are going to add an explosive force that will have a random range between the minimum force and the maximum force. It will be applied at the position of the original object and with this radius. And then I start to shrink the objects after 2 seconds. I destroy the fractured object after 5 seconds. And if there is an explosion prefab, 
I instantiate it as well and destroy it after 7 seconds. Fairly basic script, the only important part is the add explosion force, which will make each debris fly away. I have a reset, every time I press R I destroy the fractured object and I enable the original object and then there is a I enumerate it down here to shrink each fragment slowly after a certain delay. And this is attached to my scene object where I have assigned the original object which is this box and then I assigned the prefab of the box fractured which is the one that we fractured recently and I have assigned an explosion prefab. Minimum force of 100, maximum of 300, radius of 10 and scale factor of 4. And every time I press space bar now, we get a nice, really cool explosion. And it seems like the object simply blew away. We are basically disabling the original object, spawning the fractured object and spawning an explosion as well, effect. Which, by the way, it's from this awesome course, just saying. So yeah, that's how you fracture objects, the easiest and the free way, with Blender. You can also use Maya, but Maya is not free. And then you can use a plugin that you can find in the Asset Store, and it's really, really powerful. If you want something advanced, you gotta get Ray Fire. This is the best fragmentation plugin there is to break everything you want in your game. It's obviously paid, but, but it is highly professional and with an awesome documentation. I highly recommend it if you are seriously thinking about destroying a lot of objects. But in case you want to destroy a few objects and have some fun for free, you can do it with Blender with this method that I showed you, which is awesome as well. Another plugin worth mentioning is the Unity Libre Fracture. And from Elastic Sea, the Unity Fracture. Well, the names are very similar, but they are worth a mention. And if you are interested in having a look, I left some links below to everything that I've spoken on this video. So, that's it guys, I hope you have enjoyed it. And if you want to get your hands on this project as it is, it's all in my Patreon page. Talking about Patreon, I want to say a big thank you to each Patron. And a special quick shout out goes to the top tier patrons, which are Adrian Briedriski, Alexandre Carvalho, Arctic Prototype, Austin Schneider, Aviad Tobali, Bao Yen, Burak Yeni, Kruby Dubidu, Diego Marcos, Dion22, Donald Thompson, Dui Tran, Edward Chai, Jill Walter, Goblin Plague, Guilherme Trindade, KC Miller, Leonardo Ferraz, Letuli, Levin W, Little Tsai, Maxim, Mark Anum, Mograf Tech, Nat Sims, Oitsk, Oscarita Minen, Pokey, Radioactive Bullfrog, Revenant Games, Toasted Butter, Very Suta, Violet Leave It, Water Brish, Will Poilion, Yasin Salam Zadei, and Ingu Da. You guys are awesome, you guys rock. Thanks a lot for the support, it keeps the channel going. And to everyone who watched this, I hope you have enjoyed, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks, bye!